This building is called a bridge because we want this building to be a bridge between people and God. And there are other buildings around the world where they use specific words because they want to be it to be a building. My church back home is called Bethel because they want it to be a place where people touch God. It's a Baptist church because nothing to do with Bethel in America or anything. But the people use these words because they want a place. They want it to be a bridge between heaven and earth. So then, after that, we went on and looked at different people within the Bible getting anointed. So first of all, we looked at kings. Does anyone remember? We were having some crowns being, well, we had one crown being passed around. Yeah, Lewis remembers. <laughs> we were talking about who do we choose to be a king? Who, what type of people would we choose? We were looking at who was the tallest, who had been throwing a welly in our uh, event the longest because they were strong. They are the people we as people would choose as kings. Now, I think there are some kids in here that need something to do. Anyone need something to do? Would anyone like to make a crown? Yeah, so Paulette got some crowns. And you don't have to be a child. You can be a teenager. If you want to make a crown, Paulette's got pens and crowns, and you can make your own crown. You can probably make it a bit nicer than my one. What do you think? Yeah, yeah mine is very boring. So, all right, I think Paulette needs a help to hand them. OK, she's coming. So, we talked about kings, priests, and prophets bridging heaven and earth. There were people that had different roles that God anointed to be the bridge between heaven and earth, having one hand in heaven and one on earth, and bridging that gap. So, as we said, today's topic is Jesus, and he's the anointed one. He came to fulfill the law. In Jesus, we have all these three roles. And as I go through the talk today, I'm going to include what we've been talking about so that we can understand this is what they did in the Old Testament. And this is what Jesus do. And this is very similar. So first of all, Jesus as a king. The Jews, they were waiting for a new king. A Messiah to come and change their circumstances. They thought the Messiah would come and deliver them from the Romans to deliver them physically. But instead, they got Jesus. He was not the one that they were expecting. Jesus came as a spiritual king, not a political king. Do you remember that story in the Bible where Jesus comes to Jerusalem? If he was a political king, he would have been riding into Jerusalem on a horse. But instead, he chose a donkey. Jesus was a servant king. And that's what he, he showed through doing that. And also, within the crucifixion, so throughout Jesus' ministry, people had talked about Jesus is our king. What type of crown did they give Jesus? Was it the crown we are making today? Was it the king's crown they gave him? Yeah, it was crown of thorns to make fun of Jesus because they couldn't see why Jesus would be a king. And they told him, why don't you help yourself now? If you are the king of the Jews, why don't you help yourself? 
So the Old Testament, they anointed kings to rule and serve God as rulers. If you remember, God didn't really want kings. Do you remember that? But the people were asking for it. So in the end, he said, okay, yeah, let's go with it. And he chose and anointed kings. And as he said, just like Jesus, he didn't look for the big and strong one like we were talking about when we were looking at who could throw a welly the longest. When he went, well, it, was, it wasn't God going. Was he Samuel? Yes, I got my Bible right. <laughs> Samuel went to find the new king. And all the sons were there. And God said, no, 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 no. And he chose the youngest one. He chose David because God looks at the heart. And then, of course, we got Jesus in David's line as well. So Jesus came as someone very different to serve the people. A king that leads and fights on our behalf, not physically, but spiritually. He governs, a king governs, and so does Jesus. He came to show the way, to fight the battle for us. And then, of course, dying on the cross, he won the battle once and for all. All right, so the next one is priests. So we're talking a lot about oil. I just found, we still got these two bottles here. Do you remember we had lots of fun with oil and anointing people? Some of you even made some oil, I think, in your home groups and talking about the importance of oil. So priests, they were anointed and chosen to minister, to intercede and lead the people into worship, to facilitate God's presence to the Israelites. We also had a look at the tabernacle And do you know, in Exodus 40, in the first 16 verses, it explains, I think Robin went through all this, it was describing totally how everything was going to put into place. And when it was finished, can you remember what did we see? We saw God's presence. We saw, the, or not we, but they did, the Israelites did. During the day, there was a cloud, and during the night, there was a pillar because God's presence was there. And do you know, when that was there, the priest couldn't even go into the tent of meeting because it was so holy. That's what he said in Exodus 40. They couldn't. And it also describes how Moses should anoint Aaron and his sons to be those priests. And then Jesus came. He came as a high priest. Jesus was going around in all the synagogues and temple courts and preaching to the people. Just like the priest did in those days when Jesus was around. So he was acting as a priest. Already as a 12-year-old... Jesus preferred to be in the temple rather than with his, his own birth, um, earthly family. That's where Jesus wanted to be, in God's presence, where God was. So Jesus was a new priest, a new way. God sent Jesus as the ultimate priest, the bridge between heaven and earth. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Instead of a perfect lamb that the priest in the Old Testament had to use, Jesus came as the perfect lamb and was the sacrifice for us. So Jesus became a priest, 
a teacher, a healer and protector. Just like the priests tried to do that in the Old Testament as much as they could, Jesus came to be that. And in Hebrew it says that Jesus is the priest forever. God proclaimed Jesus as a priest forever. And the next one we talked about was prophets. So again, God chose and anointed prophets. They were anointed to know God intimately and bring people towards God, to speak up on God's behalf. Again and again, they had to say, turn around. Don't do that. You have to follow me. You have to move away from your wicked ways and draw near to God. The prophets did this because God is holy and he can't stand sin. But God wanted to have relationship with the people. So he asked the prophets to help in this. So they were that bridge building. The people had to turn around and ask for forgiveness and change their ways. So it says in Luke 24, 19, that he, see Jesus is, this story is when Jesus was risen from the dead and some people were walking on the road to Emmaus and they didn't realize it was Jesus that came and walked with them. And they were talking about everything that had happened and Jesus said to them, so what, who do you think Jesus is? So they said to Jesus, <laughs> He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. So the disciples had realized he was a prophet, but they were so disheartened now because Jesus was dead. And then they felt that some people thought Jesus had risen again that day and they were, couldn't really believe it and not really get hold of it. But actually, they were standing talking to Jesus. And later, of course, in that story, they realized that it was Jesus. As he held up the bread when they were having food together, they suddenly realized that this was Jesus. And then he disappeared <laughs> because Jesus was risen again and had a different body. And but yes, Jesus was a prophet. But he was a bit different to the old prophets. So I don't know if you know this, but from the old prophets until Jesus, it was 400 years. It had been a gap of no prophets around. And they were all waiting for the new Messiah. So Jesus was a bit of a different prophet. He came alongside the people. So when we read the stories in the Old Testament, it's they often came and God had told them something and they, God sent them to people and talked and said what God had told them to turn away from. Whilst in the New Testament, Jesus come alongside the people and he sits down with them, teaches them and share the kingdom and that you need to turn around. We've got lots of different stories in the Gospels about Jesus sharing about heaven and this is what you need to do. You need um, to follow me to get there. So Jesus prophesied. So this is just Jesus in a snapshot looking at what we've looked at over the last few weeks. We know he is the Messiah and he came to fulfill these three different roles, kings, priest, and prophet. And after his dead and resurrection, he was the only one we needed. Throughout the Bible, we see God's love for humanity. As people did things wrong, he gave them a new chance. You hear me talk about this again and again, but I've been doing a bit of study at Spurgeon's and I've just been studying a bit about Genesis. And through Genesis, already in Genesis, people are misbehaving and doing things wrong. 
But God's giving them another chance because he loves them. We see it already with Adam and Eve, the eating of the apple. I mean, God could have quite easily got rid of them and thought, what have I created? But he didn't want to do that. He, se- he had to send them outside of the garden as a protection. But he gave them another chance. We then have Noah with a flood. God could have got rid of everything. But he didn't. He chose the righteous because he loved his creation. And he wanted to give them another chance. And he did that through Noah. Kings, priests, and prophets were people who were leading the Israelites towards God. They were humans, and they did things wrong. They were, we see that in the Bible. They didn't always get everything right all the time. But God still used them. God still anointed those people with their faults because I believe, like he saw in David, their hearts. They knew they wanted to try to do it well. So Jesus came, and as he's the son of God, but also God, that's when we go into the Trinity and can be a bit hard to understand sometimes. But because of that, he is perfect. There's no fault. He is the anointed one. But how come Jesus was not anointed with oil? We didn't have Jesus actually in the Bible. We looked at some places where people anointed his feet later. But to get into the ministry, he wasn't actually anointed by oil. I'm getting quite excited about this. We just read those Bible verses about Jesus being baptized. And um, in the baptism, we have water. We got lots of water images in the Bible. And it comes back again and again. And our church, we're called New River, we got water in our name because we believe there is something powerful in water, in the river. New water. So let's have some fun with water, I thought. I've got a glass of water here. What do we use water for? To drink? Wash? Water the plants? Getting clean? Clean? Flushing toilets? Yeah, that's very helpful to have water for that. It's not everybody who's got that. Did I hear something over here? So mixing with, with squash, yeah. Otherwise... To cook with, yeah, for the heating. Yeah, we can use water to generate electricity. Something down here? To baptize people, yeah, just like Jesus. You haven't said, I've got a lot of these things, but I haven't got my last thing. Rhea. Water wins. Water and wind and grass. Yeah, we need water to water the grass. The grass won't live with water, which is exactly what my last point is, actually, Raya. Well done. Water gives life. And I thought maybe you kids are a bit bored with your crowns now, so I've got something else for you. I've got some pictures. And Paulette got some water jugs out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a jug with water and some little pots. If you just put a little bit of water in the pots, who would like to turn these pictures into colorful pictures? Oh, Vicky wants to do one. All right. April and Ruben, can you go around? Come on, April. Ruben, do you want to give everybody one? that wants to make. And then we got some paint brushes and a tiny bit of water. V- Vicky would like one, please. 
I'm sure Eve and April would love one too. These are magic pictures. A bit of water and it gives amazing life to this picture. Yeah, you need some water as well. It doesn't happen anything if you don't get water. I hope I got enough. So everybody got it? Who wants some? All right, let's get back to our passage. In our passage today, we saw Jesus getting baptized. And straight after, the Holy Spirit came down as a dove and God said, You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. We can see his baptism as a start of his ministry, as a sign that this is now the new way. But there is, as always in the Bible, there's often something much deeper going on as well. And so we said water. And I also said that we have water a lot in the Bible. And do you know, if we go back to the beginning of the Bible, to Genesis 1, verse 1, we see what God created first. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So in the first verse, we got water and spirit. And in Jesus' first day of ministry, we got water and spirit. I think that's really exciting. Here we had the creation, God creating the world. Now Jesus comes into the world, starting the new creation. It's a new beginning with something that I find is really exciting and really powerful. So this is really Jesus' anointing. Heavens opens and God confirms who Jesus is. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. God's anointing him, sending him off with the Holy Spirit to do the work he's come for. Jesus was the sacrifice for us when he died. He came down to earth and he was the bridge between heaven and earth for all people, not just the Israelites, but for everyone. We also read verse 18 and 19 where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to see the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He came for all of us. Not just the financially poor, but the ones that was put to the side and looked down on. Maybe because of family situations, status, education, gender, heritage, religious purity, vocation, Jesus came for every single person. So what, what does that mean for us today? In 1 Peter 2 verse 9, it says this. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not the people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
Peter is talking about us. God invites us to be part of his plan. He wants to anoint us to be the ones going out to share the good news, which we will hear about a bit more next week. But he's drawing us all closer to him. He is the bridge between heaven and earth for us. What does that mean for me, for you today, this week, tomorrow? He sent the Holy Spirit to us. It wasn't just for Jesus. And we know that when Jesus, after he was risen from the dead and gone to heaven, he sent the Spirit on the disciples. And that Spirit is still with us today. He wants to give us the Holy Spirit, and I'm pretty sure that most of us have <coughs> known the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not something new. But I do believe maybe it's something new for some of us as well. And he wants to anoint us with his Holy Spirit and to know God's love for us. Last week, we had a guest speaker, Alex, was here. And he was talking about God's presence, just like in the tabernacle, about knowing God's presence. In the tabernacle, in the tent of meeting, the presence was so strong, so that the priests were not allowed to go in there. And Alex was talking about how we can experience some of that presence of God as well. And he was sharing a bit about how he's had that experience. And I've had that experience where I, can, I just love being with God and just being and sitting in his presence. And sometimes I get like a warm feeling inside me. And I know that that's the Holy Spirit. And you know, he wants to do that with all of us. Sometimes we might not feel anything. Other times, different people have different experiences. But God wants to touch us. Jesus wants to be that bridge for us between heaven and earth where he holds one hand in heaven and one hand on earth through the Holy Spirit. And we can touch heaven. We don't need to be perfect. In the Old Testament they needed a perfect lamb. But we don't need that. We just need Jesus. Because he's our perfect sacrifice. That's all we need today. Do you want to come close to him today? We're going to do a bit of worship now, so worship team can start coming up whilst I finish off. So do we, do you, do I want to come to Jesus, the anointed one, the prophet who speaks up for us and who asks us to turn around from the past. To the priest who teaches, heals, and protects us. To the king who leads us and is fighting on our behalf. Jesus, the anointed one, we can come to him as we are worshipping now. It's a chance for us to come close to Jesus and know that he loves us. Why don't we pray and then sing together? Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the anointed one. And thank you that we can come to you this morning. Lord Jesus, we love to know more about you. In Jesus' name, amen.